following program is intended for mature audiences. The time is now for the hardest hit, yet completely trivial, football show on the planet. You are in rarefied territory. Ladies and gentlemen, well, well to the broken helmet. Let's rock. Hey, coming to you live on tape on this Sunday, January 2nd, week 17 of the NFL season. It is Rich Eggie here bringing to you the Broken Helmet. We've got two games left, everybody. Two games. And it'll be one in just a short 12 hours or so, I guess, right? That puts us to uh, 1 o'clock in the morning with one game left on the slate after that. That being the Monday night game of the Steelers versus the Browns. But we got a bunch of football left before that. Game day morning, looking at all of the adjustments to the lines, which there has been a bunch, plus all of the movement for the tickets and the money pools, along with the sharps, if there was any. Uh, quick check on the injuries, the playoff standings, and all that other good stuff. So let's get right into it here. We will start off. Oh, man, I really right now. Now jumped into kind of a broadcasting voice as I'm giving to you the broadcasting voice within me, uh, which I kind of don't do. But whenever you start off one of these podcasts, you kind of just got to get yourself moving. It's why a lot of uh, broadcasters that do solo shows, and I'm, I'm thinking specifically of Steve Summers, because when I interned at WFAN, I used to watch him do this. They all start off with monologues. So, you know, you, you see a, a, a solo host go into a show, and the first bit is always a monologue of some sorts, obviously to kind of frame the the broadcast, the broadcast, the show, the podcast, whatever, you know, whatever it is, what you will, um, whatever it is, what you will, that's not even English. Um, but they always do it to kind of get a flow to it and get themselves in a rhythm. It's like playing sports or playing a video game. You know, sometimes you just fall in the zone, you know, quote unquote zone, if you will. And so a lot of people end up doing those monologues to get rolling there. And obviously, as I tried to start off this podcast, I did so by putting myself into broadcasting voice, which I heard as I was doing it, and all of a sudden, you just kind of, I don't know, is, is somebody that's been on both sides of it, sure, there is a time and place for broadcasting voice, but other times, uh, you know, kind of like your own personal podcast that you do in your basement for the fun of it, what is the ultimate point? But anyway, uh, I digress. So let's take a, a quick look here, and we will jump off. We'll do uh, we'll do downs. Why not? Uh, we'll do first down. We'll do the ch- – well, I'm not screwed downs. Let's just get into it. I was going to do downs like I do on my regular podcast first, second, third, fourth, but, you know, uh, we're time crunch here, and who the hell cares, right? No format here. Let's just get into it. So let's start off with the playoff standings, and we will start off from a conference standpoint right now. So this is what we're looking at here as we stare down the barrel of the Week 17 gun. We have Kansas City, Tennessee, Cincinnati, and Buffalo leading their divisions. Kansas City is 11-4. and four. One game behind them is Tennessee. Kansas City's got a big game today versus Cincinnati. That's going to be on the road in Cincinnati. And then Tennessee is going to be home hosting the Dolphins. Dolphins need that game. Tennessee obviously wants that game because should Tennessee win and maybe Cincinnati throw the upset there in Kansas... Or versus Kansas City in Cincinnati, you could have two teams tied at 11 and 5. So, those are those two teams. Cincinnati then sits in third atop their division. We just covered them. They're at 9-6. and six. They're two games behind Kansas City. They're facing off against Kansas City today at home. Then you have Buffalo. Buffalo is at 9-6, and six, also tied with Cincinnati, but coming in fourth, so they are the lowest of the four division leaders. They are going to be having a cakewalk today as they host the lowly Falcons. But the Falcons are playing for something, which is crazy enough. Not a good season for the Falcons. Maybe I shouldn't call them lowly. They're not 
quite pathetic. However, they haven't had a good season. They're still in the hunt, though. So that's a game that means something. However, Buffalo, huge favorites today at home. They're at 9-6. and six. They're looking to get the win. So if you consider all four of those teams, let's say that Buffalo gets the win, moves them up to 10-6. and six. Let's say Tennessee takes a loss versus Miami. That moves them to 10-6. and six. Cincinnati gets the loss, moves them to 10-7. and seven. You could see a whole bunch of shifts in that regard because that could see Buffalo, I believe, move all the way up to number two. Cincinnati moved down to four, and Tennessee moved to three. Um, and that is because uh, they, win, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Buffalo wins the tiebreaker over Tennessee. But anyway, as I uh, just you know throw a whole bunch of scenarios at you, that's where we're sitting right now. Kansas City, Tennessee, Cincinnati, and Buffalo are the top four. Behind them in the AFC, in the wild card, you have Indianapolis, New England, and Miami. Indianapolis and New England are both at 9-6. and six. New England is tied with Buffalo at 9-6. and six. So New England and Buffalo could jump around quite a bit should Buffalo ultimately lose today versus the Falcons. Probably not likely. And New England then end up winning. They also have a cakewalk game as they host the Jaguars today in New England. That's what happens when you host, you're in your same spot. So it's a little bit of a redundancy. Colts, meanwhile, are going to be playing a big game versus the Raiders. They're going to be at home in Indianapolis. The Raiders are fighting for their playoff lives. They're also going to be short a couple of big players as Darren Waller, Carl Nassib are both going to be out of that game for COVID. Meanwhile, Indianapolis gets their quarterback back. Quarterback? They get their quarterback as... Uh, Wentz ends up getting out of the COVID protocol, and he'll be good to go today. So you have Buffalo at 9-6, and six, Indianapolis at 9-6, and six, Buffalo having a cakewalk, Indianapolis big game versus the Raiders, and then New England at 9-6 and six, also having a soft game today versus the Jaguars. Behind them fighting for, oh, oh sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Indianapolis, I talked to Buffalo is actually the fourth seed. I'm just talking about them competing against the Patriots, which is why I include them. The Wild cards, like I said, Indianapolis, New England, we covered. Behind them is Miami. Miami has the final playoff slot at 8-7. and seven. They have a huge logjam behind them with Baltimore at 8-7, and seven, Chargers at 8-7, and seven, Vegas at 8-7, and seven, and then you have Pittsburgh and Cleveland at 7-7 seven and 7-8. Seven and seven and eight. Pittsburgh has that tie in there, which is why they only it seems like they have one less game. So, for this last playoff spot, Miami is 8 and 7. They're playing against Tennessee as mentioned. Baltimore is at 8 and 7. They're up against it because it looks as though Tyler Huntley is going to be going for them and they're also out two big defensive players as Avery and OI Awai, Awai, I believe, uh, the rookie, is, are going to be out uh, due to injury. So, uh, due to injury or COVID. One of the two, they're out. So, uh, Avery is injury, and I think Awai, Awai is also injury. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Those two are out, and Baltimore takes a knock on their defense. Also, on offense, they're not going to get... Huntley, uh, they're not going to get Lamar Jackson back. At least that's what it sounds like as of right now. I think it's going to be a game time decision, but everything is leading toward Huntley. So they're going to be hosting the Rams. Rams are going to be basically full go here. They almost got Akers back. Akers is not going to play today. So you're going to see a steady dose of Sony Michelle for all the fantasy football owners of Michelle. He is going to be a big play. Henderson obviously out with injury. Otherwise, everybody else there is pretty healthy. So Ravens have a tough go today versus the Rams, and that. Eight and seven, they're fighting for their lives because they really need to win it to stay in here. So Miami at eight and seven, Baltimore at eight and seven, right behind them in the eight spot. Also behind them in the in the nine spot is the Chargers. Now the Chargers of all these teams probably have the easiest go. They're going to be home versus the Broncos today. They also have a monster spread in their favor. Uh, it's going to be eight points. We'll get to those updated spreads later on. However, Chargers look to have a, a little bit of an easy go today. Although nothing with the Chargers is easy. They throw up these. Stinko games like versus the Texans, and you never know what's coming or going. However, today looking good versus the Broncos. And then you have the Raiders. We said that they have that tough game versus the Colts in Indianapolis. And then you have the Monday night game for the next two people, Pittsburgh at seven and seven and Cleveland at seven and eight. So what happens? Who the hell knows? Miami's got the toughest go right now because they're going to be going up against Tennessee, who is also fighting in this one. And probably the better of the two teams, I would say, and at home. 
Then you have Baltimore, who's got a ton of injury, which gives the Chargers a way to slide up there and get into that seventh spot. Should Baltimore ultimately lose and Miami lose, Chargers then would take that final spot. And that's not nothing to say what happens with Indianapolis and New England, uh, as they at nine and six could both lose, making them nine and seven, and any of these eight and seven teams win and actually tie them. So anyway, mix mosh of what's going on in the AFC, but there's what we go. Uh, that's what we have. So let's go over to the NFC where these are the top four. You got Green Bay at 12 and 3. They're sitting pretty. However, Dallas is beaten down their door at 11 and 4, as are the Rams. They are also 11 and 4. And as are the Buccaneers. They're also 11 and 4. So you got Green Bay at 12 and 3, and then the other three teams at 11 and 4. Everybody fighting for that top spot with two games left. Now, Tampa Bay is battling injury, but they're getting some people back now. They're losing some others. You know, if you want to go down at COVID wise, they're going to get some people back, namely their coach. So Arians comes back off the COVID list, as does uh, Dean and Murphy Bunting, so they get some secondary help. They're going to lose Barrett to injury. They're going to lose JPP to injury. Um, and then Sherman, who hasn't played in a little bit, he's also doubtful. So you have some people coming back from injury. You have some people going out. Mike Evans, he's going to be questionable. Sounds like he's going to be go, but he's going to be limited on a pitch count. So for all you fantasy owners like myself questioning what the hell to do with Mike Evans, who knows? You could start him. He gets a touchdown. He gets like 100 yards, and you look into it, or his hammy's still hurt, and he doesn't play, and you're like, shit, I should have just start, start, sat him because he was hurt. Uh, Antonio Brown looks like he's going to be a go, also battling a little bit of injury, but a lot less, uh, a lot less risk dealing with Antonio Brown. So anyway, those are the Bucks, and that's they're dealing with the Jets today. Anyway, so the Jets, the Buccaneers have some injuries. They got a soft game here against the Jets. They're getting some people back, so they in all likelihood, should move up to 12-4. and four. The Rams, uh, as we discussed, against the Ravens, a uh, banged-up Ravens team, they look like they should be good for the win, but you never know, obviously, with the Rams. Uh, you know, weird on the road, thing, crazy things happen. The Rams have stunk in spots here this year. So they have an 11-4 and four game versus the Ravens, where they're looking to win to stay in it here. And then Dallas has the Cardinals, which is probably the hardest game of the bunch. The Cardinals obviously dealing with a little bit of a different team than the beginning of the year, you know, the loss of uh, Murray for all those weeks has not really helped them along. He's gotten, he's come back, but he hasn't kind of been the same primarily because their offense hasn't been the same. You had James Conner, who was a huge bonus uh, signing for them, and had played well throughout the year, you know, pounding it on the ground, especially in spots where they needed him when Chase Edmonds fell out. Well, he is banged up. He he didn't play last week. I don't know if he's going to play today, but the point that I'm trying to make here is that their offense has not been the same. But the biggest factor that you have lost with that offense has been DeAndre Hopkins, the wide receiver, number one guy, the trade, which, oddly enough, if you think about it, this trade for DeAndre Hopkins for, uh, you you forgot about him already, but David Johnson, who was a stud uh, up until the trade, it's not really overly looking terrible if DeAndre Hopkins you know, kind of like falls off, right? David Johnson, you chalk up. I I mean, it was a loss. I I don't know off the top of my head and without looking at Google, which I'm not going to do right now, what the the picks were involved. But I mean, it's kind of a wash, right? Like you got Hopkins, but Hopkins is basically a loss this year. He might come back for the championship game in the Super Bowl if you can get there. But, you know, did he really do anything? anything other than, you know, give you a little bit of a bonus the past two years. You haven't been able to capitalize on it. And as he approaches his 30s, which I believe he's either 28 or 29 this year uh, and going into the 30s, and now he's injury prone. Usually what happens with players that enter their 29 to 31 years and they ultimately find injury in their future where they never battled it before, everything usually goes downhill. You usually don't rally behind that. So should Hopkins end up being kind of a a Julio Jones type player and end up being out every other week or something to that effect? And I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's kind of odd to think about it because when that trade first took place, everybody was like, ah, God, uh, what a joke of a trade this is. Uh, you know, Bill, uh, oh God, I, I forgot his name already. Uh, you know, the, the, the Bill O'Brien. You know, Bill O'Brien doesn't know what the hell he's doing. He's a terrible GM, which he was. I'm not taking that away from him. However, I am saying that it wasn't as terrible as everybody was saying. So anyway, let's get back to where we are now. So the Cardinals have a tough game against the Cowboys. Uh, today, the Cowboys are trying to get that 12th win. Probably the toughest of the bunch because Arizona has some potential, but they've run into a wall on multiple fronts. 
fronts here. So then you have Green Bay. Green Bay has a, a, an absolute snooze fest today because, as if you have not heard by now, the Vikings will be without their starting quarterback. Uh, so Kirk Cousins, unvaccinated and tested positive. So Gonzo, he is out for today. They have a backup insert name here going at quarterback. And so that has uh, led to a 13-point uh, spread in favor of the Packers. So that's what we're looking at for the top four. Then behind them, you have the Cardinals, who are in the first wild card spot. We just talked about them. They're going to be battling the Rams for the NFC West title at 11 and 4, 10 and 5. And other than that, they're going to be holding on to the number one wild card because the next team is two behind them. So then behind them, you have this team that I'm talking about San Francisco 49ers at 8 and 7, Philadelphia Eagles at 8 and 7. So right now, you got the 49ers playing today against the Texans. Terrible team, but San Francisco banged up. Garoppolo, no go for today. Then you have the Eagles who are playing against the Washington football team that has fallen into the gutters of hell, fighting on the sideline. Just an absolute mess there in Washington. Uh, Ron Rivera tried his best to kind of right the ship, had some moments uh, of uh, spectacularness. Is that a word? I just made it one. Uh, uh, after their bye, when they took out the the Buccaneers, but things have slowly fallen apart there for Washington. Uh, so Philly's playing them to hold on to that final spot. Now be- behind them is Minnesota at 7-8. and eight. So these are the teams trying to get those final wild card spots. Minnesota 7-8, and eight, we just talked about them in Green Bay, up against it with no quarterback. You have Atlanta up against it as they travel to Buffalo, uh, playing against the Bills team that is uh, red hot right now. New Orleans at 7-8, and eight, and New Orleans will do you know whatever they can today versus the Panthers, which shouldn't you know require too much because the Panthers are just a disaster. When you have your head coach, Matt Rule, who was heralded coming out of uh, Temple, and the Giants wanted big time, uh, and then lost out to David Tepper, who came up and threw him as much money as possible. When you have your head coach, Mr. Rule, quoting Jay-Z and saying that it took Jay-Z seven years, seven years, to become uh, what he is there, you have trouble. Because anytime you have a coach quoting Jay-Z... You're grasping at straws, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> what a fucking asshole. You, you can't stand up there realistically and quote Jay-Z. Like, who, who's go- who are you trying to win over with that analogy? I don't know. I have no clue. Other than make yourself look like a fool. Right? I, I mean, that is... I- <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, I, I'm not going to even get into it. I, there's a, a bunch of racial jokes and, and racial uh, tangents you could go off that. But uh, a rule uh, trying to appeal to somebody there with his Jay-Z comment. It looks like the Panthers are a mess, so the Saints, uh, you know, I, I would imagine that they would win at home here today. They are big favorites, uh, almost a touchdown. So they are at 7-8. and eight. And then after that, it's Washington. They're at 6-9. and nine. They're out of it. They're, they're not technically out of it, but I'm marking them out of it. So you have Philly and San Francisco at eight and seven, Minnesota, Atlanta, New Orleans at seven and eight. New Orleans looking at the best of the bunch to move to eight and eight, which means that San Francisco and Philadelphia would have to win to keep up with Joneses. So that is the NFC. If you want to look at it divisionally, you have Buffalo and New England both at nine and six fighting against each other. That's the AFC East. You have Cincinnati, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, and Cleveland all fighting against each other for the AFC North. Although Cleveland is two games behind. Behind Cincinnati and Pittsburgh has got that one tie in there, making it seven and seven. They have the big game, Pittsburgh and Cleveland on Monday night against each other. Probably, uh, you know, Big Ben's last game there in Pittsburgh. AFC South, you're going to see Tennessee and Indianapolis battling it out. Indianapolis is looking really good right now. Uh, they were terrible at the beginning of the year, but they had a lot of bad luck, and now they kind of pieced it together, and they're one game behind Tennessee, and Tennessee has played above their means all year long. I mean, at first, it was Derrick Henry, and when Derrick Henry went out, look, I, me included, I thought that team was going to go right into the shitter. At some point, you've got to give a, a ton of credit here to Mike Rabel and the coaching job that he's done, because this team has not quit. They have done excellent. They're 6-2 and two at home. Their struggles have primarily come on the, on the road where they're 4-3, and three. but you know, six and two at home. They get the wins that they have to get, and they've been doing it all without Henry, who was their offense for the entire beginning of the season. So, though Tennessee and Indianapolis will be fighting out the AFC South, AFC West is just basically the Chiefs. That's it. Anybody else involved in this, that being the Chargers, Vegas uh, Raiders, and Broncos, are all fighting for a playoff spot. Obviously, the Chargers are looking okay based on everything we talked about just before. Flip over to the NFC. 
And we have Dallas. They're alone atop the NFC East. NFC North. Green Bay atop there. NFC South. Tampa Bay atop there. And the NFC West, you have the Rams and the Cardinals facing off against each other. Rams 11-4 and four, and the Cardinals 10-5. and five. So that is the breakdown of the conference and then the divisions. So let's head over to our games. And I, I got to come up with some better way. If I'm not going to do the downs, I got to come up with a better way there to transition because it's kind of like you're throwing everything together and it's like, ah, what does the whistle mean? It's a transition for what? I don't fucking know. Rich, figure it out. Make something different. Okay, I got you. I'm with you right there. Uh, so let's go. We'll start off with the Buccaneers in New Jersey uh, facing off against the New York Jets. Right now, this game is at 13 and a half points. The Sharps are on the Buccaneers. The tickets are on the Buccaneers at 74%, and the money is on on the Jets at 82%. The tickets have actually flown more toward the Jets as the week has gone on. They were penned at 80% earlier in the week on the Bucks, and that has come down 6 percentage points. So you're seeing the Jets get a little bit of love. The money had no uh, nothing on it uh, when we quoted this earlier in, in the week when I did the podcast with my brother, so that's just a new uh, piece of data. So the over-under is 46 and a half. This spread has gone up half a point in favor of the Bucks. My brother has this as one of his locks. He's taking the Buccaneers and the 13 points. I ended up taking the Jets on this one. We talked about all of the players coming in and out. Browns and Evans are a go. Arians is back on the sideline after clearing COVID, as is Dean and Murphy Bunting. They will be in because of COVID. And then you have uh, Barrett and JPP out. And then you have Sherman doubtful. So that is all of the activity for the Bucks jets games. Jets, I, there's really nothing to talk about. It's, I mean, it's the Jets. Are they going to lose by 13 or more or not? Chiefs, like we said, traveling into Cincinnati. This game is now three and a half points in favor of the Chiefs. So this is the second road dog, uh, road favorite in a row here. Second home dog, road favorite. But the Chiefs were favored by five and a half points earlier in the week. That has now come down a full two points for the Chiefs. CEH is out of this game due to injury. Uh, the over under here is going to be fifty one. That's up a point, uh, point and a half from earlier in the week. So the sharps are going to be on the Bengals in this. The tickets are going to be on the Chiefs, as is the money. The tickets have gone up on the Chiefs. The money has gone up on the Bengals. So even though the Chiefs own the percent, the majority of those two, you're seeing pros versus Joes action as the Joes are ending up on the Kansas City side while the pros are going to be moving over toward Cincinnati. So you have pro action toward Cincinnati and the Sharps on Cincinnati looking like the explanation for why the spread has come down a full two points in that one. Colts hosting the Raiders. We talked about it. This spread was six earlier in the week. I thought that that spread was adjusted for Wentz playing. Maybe not, as Wentz got the good... The clear thumbs up, good to go, and this spread went up to eight. So now the Colts favored by eight at home. The Sharps are going to take the Raiders. The tickets and the money are in on the Colts, um, although that has come down as the week has gone on. So you are seeing some flows over toward the Las Vegas side. So Vegas getting the flows and the Sharps, although the majority still lie for the tickets and the money on the Colts in this one. Over under 46 points. I had mentioned earlier Darren Waller and Carl Nass are out due to COVID in this one. Uh, so uh, both the Eggie brothers for this ended up taking the Colts. I just, you know, even with it, I liked it better at six points. I will say that. Uh, eight points is getting a little, little, uh, a little aggressive there, uh, liking Indianapolis. You're really hoping, thinking that the Raiders are going to stink it up there for a game that means a lot to them. But hey, you never know. So early in the week at six, my brother and I both took the Colts and we talked about all the rest of it. So let's head it over to Washington for the next game. Football team hosting the Eagles. The Eagles are now favored by six points in this game. This is a game that actually has come up two and a half points in terms of the spread toward the Eagles. Eagles getting a lot of love. So the over-under is 44 and a half. That's down a little bit from 46 earlier in the week. Montez Sweat and Gibson for the Washington football team are both out. Howard is going to be a good to go. He is going to get a little bit of play there with Miles Sanders being out. But Boston Scott probably is the the bigger uh, running back that well the running back that has got a bigger uh, amount of stock in him for fantasy football this being the championship weekend there but Howard going to be good 
I guess he was a question mark with a little bit of injury coming into it. As for the stats, the Sharps are going to be on the Washington football team. The Eagles are going to get the tickets and the money in their favor, uh, although the money is barely uh, on their side at 52%. Tickets more so at 64%, but you've seen the flows moving over toward Washington as the week's gone on. So Eagles, big favorites there in Washington. The Rams are going to be in Baltimore, also another road favorite here, and the Rams are getting a ton of love. They were at 3.5 points earlier in the week. That game has gone up to 6.5 points. So the Sharps are in on the Rams, 69% (laughs) uh, of the tickets are on the Rams, and 64% of the money is on the Ravens. Now, the Ravens have seen flows of both tickets and money coming toward their side as the week has gone on, so a little bit of a head-scratching move is looks like Baltimore's getting the love, but that spread went from 3.5 to 6.5. Obviously, the big note there is that Lamar Jackson doesn't look like he's going to play. So that's probably more of the reason for the three-point adjustment toward the Rams than anything else. So otherwise, we also said that Averett and Awai, uh, Away, I can't pronounce the name. I said this you know, week one. I'm terrible with names. And I don't to put all the effort in to try to figure out the pronunciation. Uh, you know, I it's just not worth it for me. So I just fuck up the names and I have fun with it. So anyway, uh, two big de- two big defense scratches for Baltimore there. So uh, in regard to uh, locks, a- actually I ended up locking in the Rams. My brother ended up locking in Baltimore. So uh, you know we're going to be on opposite sides of it their way. Oddly enough, if you want to rewind. <laughs> Go back to the Philadelphia game. I forgot to say that the Eagles were locks of both me and my brother. So uh, while we were on the same side with Philadelphia versus Washington, here with the Rams in Baltimore, we're on opposite sides. I'm going to be on the Rams. My brother is going to be on the Ravens. So we will travel to Baltimore. Now the next four games are all going to be home favorites, some by big amounts. The first one is going to be the Bills hosting the Falcons. The Bills right now are a trifecta bet. They are they are favored by 14 and a half. The over under in this is 45 and a half. The Sharps are on Buffalo as is the tickets and the money. The money way more than the tickets. Tickets are barely on the Bills side at 52% and the money is at 77%. Uh, so you seeing the pros really love Baltimore, uh, Buffalo here. Now, the flows have only gone one way. Money there has not seen a lot of flows because this was off the off the uh, records earlier when we did the podcast. So there was nobody uh, in terms of the money percentage on there. Uh, all stats, I should have said this earlier, are all from the Action Network app. Uh, but earlier in the week when we did the podcast, nothing was in the money column. Now 77% have come in on Buffalo. Meanwhile, Buffalo has seen a tick up in their ticket percentage as well because earlier in the week, the Falcons actually owned that 58% and now the Bills own it 52%. So like I said, trifecta here for the Bills. 14 and a half points is the spread. Uh, I'm on the Bills. My brother there is on the Falcons. Really nothing of note to there in terms of COVID or injury. Patriots are going to be hosting the Jaguars. Patriots, big favorites here. 16 and a half points. That's up a point from earlier in the week. The Sharps are going to be on the Jaguars. The tickets and the money are on the Pats. The money, it's 99%, so that's a screwy percentage there. So th- there was nothing in regards to the money percentage again. So what you're seeing with the Action Network app and, and the stats are coming in, it's not the fault of the Action Network app, but with COVID and these injuries, I, you know, we mentioned this in the weekly podcast is that you're not seeing people jump in here because with all of this movement and the COVID, uh, you know, impact along with injuries, it's just really tough to do these, these games ahead of time. You, you look at the Packers, Packers and the Vikings, right? That game must, might've been infinitely closer. And now with their quarterback gone, that game is done finished, right? So anyway, the Pats right now are 16 and a half point favorites. They own the tickets and the money. Uh, as for the, uh, me and my brother, I ended up taking the Pats here and my brother ended up taking the Pats as well. So the brother's Eggy in on uh, New England here at home. 
The Bears are the next home team that is favored, this time by 6.5 points. They're facing off against the Giants. The Sharps are in on the Giants. The Bears own the tickets, although uh, at 66%, that flow has gone toward the Giants. And then the Giants own the majority of the money at 89%, and that number has gone up. So you're seeing flows head toward the Giants along with the Sharps right now. Me and my brother both took the Giants in this one at the 6.5 points. The over-under, by by the way, was 37.5 earlier. It's gone up to 40.5 points. So you're seeing a little bit of action on the over, which has adjusted that line there. So Giants getting a little bit of love here and the over getting love as well in Chicago. Titans facing off against the Dolphins. This is the last 1 o'clock game that we have to talk about. The Titans right now favored by 3 points here at home. The Sharps are on the Titans. The tickets are on the Titans. The money, mind you, is on the Dolphins. So if you look at the flows, you will also see that the Dolphins are getting love in both the tickets and the money pool. Right now, the Titans are have the majority of tickets at 59%, but that has come down, and the Dolphins own the majority of the money pool at 91%, which has gone up. So we do have some notes in regard to this game on the injury front. Brandon Jones and and Adam Butler have both cleared COVID. So they will be with their teams this week if they can, you know, find it in themselves to play. I know that Jones has a little bit of illness effects. So even though he is cleared, he's a little banged up. So I guess there is a question mark of how much he's going to be able to go today uh, in Tennessee. But it is a big, huge bonus for Miami because Jones is has had a phenomenal year when he's been in there uh, for the Dolphins. So again, Titans and the Dolphins. The Titans favored by three. Over under is 40 and a half. Not looking at a lot of points here for Tennessee. My brother and I both have locked in the Titans as one of our top picks. So let's head over to the four o'clock games. First one being in San Francisco, where the 49ers are hosting the Texans. The 49ers are 13-point favorites right now. Over-under is 44 points. The Sharps have the 49ers. Meanwhile, the Texans own the tickets and the money. You're also seeing pros versus Joes action here, as the tickets have flown more toward the 49ers, and the money has come in more on the Texans. So you have the pros liking the Texans here, even though the Texans own both the tickets and the money majority as of right now. So at 13 points, it scared away me and my brother from the 49ers. 49ers obviously dealing with the Garoppolo injury, so Trey Lance will be under center for them. It announced today that Garoppolo will need finger surgery, thumb surgery at the end of the year. So this is just going to be something that they're going to have to deal with, and Kyle Shanahan is going to have to figure out ways on offense to scheme around the fact that Garoppolo is not going to be good to go, unless Lance just comes like a like a rocket here uh, down the stretch and just proves that he's got it where earlier in the year it really looked like he was a little bit confused here in the headlight and uh, didn't look like he was ready for prime time. Maybe he is now. We're going to see starting today. Uh, my brother and I both took the Texans in this one, so we are Texans minus the 13 uh, in San Francisco. Uh, no locks there. I meant to hit the whistle. There we go. Los Angeles is our next stop where the Chargers will be facing off against the Broncos. The Chargers are now eight-point favorites here, five and a half earlier in the week. That has dialed up to eight. Over-under is 45 points. The Sharps have not taken a side. The tickets are on the Chargers, and the money is on the Broncos, and the flows have come in on both sides as they are now. So you've seen tickets coming in on the Chargers, and they're the favorite. You've seen money coming in on the Broncos, and they are the underdog. So pros versus Joes, they're on opposite side of this one. As for my brother and I, we both ended up locking in the Chargers as one of our top five picks here. Uh, Liked it a lot more at five and a half, I will be honest. in regard to injuries and COVID stuff, uh, Jared Cook, he will be out for the Chargers. He has COVID, so he is done. Williams and Gordon, the running back duo for the Broncos, will be a go today. They were both battling injury, but not enough to keep them out of this contest. Lost, uh, sorry, from Los Angeles, we go down to New Orleans. Saints hosting the Panthers. Mentioned this before, the Panthers, they're uh, just in a spiral downward. They are now underdogs in New Orleans by six and a half points. That's actually down half a point from earlier in the week when the Saints were favored by seven. But So the Saints are favored by six and a half. The over-under here is 37 and a half. Nobody's looking for any kind of scoring offense in this one. The Sharps are going to be on the Panthers. The tickets are on the Saints, and the money is on the Panthers. Money is 
been coming in steadily on the Panthers all the way up to 86% here. My brother and I both took the Saints there at home. Big game of the day. Cowboys hosting the Cardinals. Cowboys favored by 6.5 now. That's up a full point from earlier in the week. The Cowboys over under here is 52 points, so you're looking for some uh, you know, some action here versus the Cardinals, although the Cowboys have a pretty solid defense. If you go over to DVOA, they're actually number one now, one versus the pass, 19th against the rush, and the rush is not really what the Cardinals are known for, so it could keep the Cardinals down here. If you're looking at over-unders, it could be something that you know attracted your eye. Who knows? Sometimes you know they, they just blow up and they just light it up. And I think the Cardinals will have to if they want to keep in this game, which is probably why that over-under is so high. Uh, anyway, Cowboys favored by 6.5 here. They also own the Sharp Choice, and they own the tickets, although just slightly at 51%. And that flow has gone the other way toward the Cardinals. Meanwhile, the money has been in on the Cardinals and has gone up, all the way up to 92%. Again, some of these statistics are just a little batty because I don't think people are really pulling the trigger until the actual game time. Uh, but as of right now, 92% of the money is in on the Cardinals. So my brother, uh, he ended up taking the Cardinals on this one, but I ended up taking the home team and locked it in as as a one of my best bets is Dallas here at home at five. I had it at five and a half. Now it's at six and a half. Um, you know, there's only so much the Cardinals could do. Hey, maybe the, you know Murray just goes crazy and things align for them. But from what I've seen, they, they've really struggled here, and now they're going to have to go in against the Cowboys team that is. You know, they put it together earlier in the year and then they kind of fell off and now they've kind of dialed it up. I mean, it's the number one defense. If you look at their offense, they're number eight. I, you know, I like Dallas in this spot here at home. So the next game is going to be in Seattle. This is a meaningless game unless you are a fan of the draft picks because there's a lot of significance in this one. And we'll get to that in a bit. Seahawks facing off against the Lions. Seahawks are favored by eight, up a point from earlier. They own the tickets. They, no, sorry, they own the money at 98%. That number's gone up. Meanwhile, the Lions own the tickets, and that num number's gone up. So Lions had 72% of the tickets. Seahawks have 98% of the money, and those have went up. So you have a pros versus Joes game as the flows have gone up on each, respectively. So over under here is 41 points. Both me and my brother ended up taking the Seahawks in this. So... This brings us to the Sunday night football game. Packers hosting the Vikings. Green Bay currently favored by 13 points. That is up from 6.5, obviously, because Kirk Cousins is lost for COVID. To, well, lost to COVID for the Vikings. So he will not be under center today. That's going to impact them mightily. That's to <laughs> much to the chagrin of, well, the chagrin? I don't know if the chagrin is the right word um, in this case. I probably should know that before I say it. But anyway, Jeff Justin Jefferson owners who were banking on a good, a big game here for their final week and their championships, they're going to be up against it now because you're going to have a backup throwing to Jefferson, which is not what you want here for your championship games. Um, so anyway, Packers favored by 13 points. The This is a trifecta game. The Sharps, the money, and the tickets all on the Packers. The tickets are barely on the Packers at 62%, and that number has come down and headed over toward Minnesota. So the 13 points causes Minnesota to get a little uptick in tickets, but it has not scared away the money. The money is at 95% and going up on the Packers. That was at 65% earlier in the week is up a full 30 points. So 13 points or 6.5 points, doesn't matter. The money is coming in on the Packers. Uh, for me and my brother, we both took the Vikings in this one earlier in the week at 6.5. I don't know what I would do here with the 13 points. I probably would not uh, do anything. But if you were to ask me to pick something... I don't know. I guess I'm just going to stick with what it is. Me and my brother both had the Vikings in this one, although that's really skewed. Over-under, if I haven't mentioned it, came down a full five points. 42.5 points now is what the over-under is. It was 47.5, and, and obviously with no quarterback uh, of note for the Vikings, that number has come down. So Packers looking good at uh, Sunday Night Football. Leaving one football game left, and that is going to be the Browns and the Steelers. 
Monday Night Football will see the Browns a road favorite by three and a half points here. The Sharps are in on the Browns. The Steelers own the tickets and the money mightily too as the tickets are 70% on the Steelers and going up and the money is 96% on the Steelers and going up. So you're seeing pros and Joes both pile in for the Steelers. You still have a good solid day left of betting so ultimately those numbers might adjust but right now the Steelers getting love as they are the home dog here uh, versus the Browns. Probably uh, Mr. Roethlisberger's last game in Pittsburgh. Over under 41 points, so not seeing a lot of uh, not a lot of expectations here on points for this one. And so that is the run. Oh, as, as for the picks, uh, I, me and my brother both took the Browns in this one. I just don't think the uh, Steelers are really any good. So that is the rundown of all of the statistics for these games and the adjusted spreads. So going through the things that we did not mention yet, we have over and unders, and I will give them right now. My brother, he ended up taking the Chiefs Bengals under at 49.5 points. That number has gone up, so I ended up getting closing value because I took the over in the Chiefs and Bengals. So, uh, did I say Chiefs Bucks? Whatever. Chiefs Bengals, I have the over, he has the under. We did that at 49.5 points, but that has adjusted up two points almost at 51 points now. So, Rich over. 51, uh, well, let's say 49 and a half, and Chris under, Chiefs, Bengals. The other game that my brother ended up taking was Pat's Jaguars. He took the under of 42 points, expecting nothing in that game is he. So he took the under there, New England versus Jacksonville in New England. And then I took one more game over, and that was the Brown Steelers. So the last game we talked about, which was 41 points for the Browns Steelers over under. I'm going to go over that. I just thought it wasn't a lot of points. And I think in this one, Big Ben's probably going to try to air it out a little bit. He's tried every game. He hasn't been good, which is why you know they've struggled. But I imagine that I think that there's going to be a little bit of scoring in this game. And 41 is not a lot of points. So you know, you're kind of looking at 41 points. You think it could be a defensive battle. And then you go and you look. DVOA, this is where these teams line up, is that Pittsburgh right now is 20th in the NFL, and Cleveland is 15th. So you're not talking about two teams that are lighting it up. Not not at all. And if you want to break down uh, some of the you know more finite uh, and not finite, whatever. If you want to look at it a little bit more in depth is what the fuck I'm trying to say. Pittsburgh's 30th DVOA against the rush, which is what Cleveland does phenomenally. So you could see Cleveland running the shit out of the ball, and Chubb has had a, a, a decent second half of the year here, which could contribute to the scoring. And you, you factor it all in. Big Ben's last game, Pittsburgh being bad against the run, Cleveland being good against the run. I just I could see more more scoring than 41 points. So I ended up taking the over there. So ultimately, uh, let's do the final rewind here as we look to punch out. We'll give the five best bets that we had, and they will be the following. Drum roll, please. I ended up taking the Eagles, the Rams, the Titans, the Chargers, and the Cowboys. Those are all of my best bets. My brother, meanwhile, ended up taking the Bucks. He took the Eagles, he took the Titans, he took the Chargers, and he also took the Ravens. Those were his five best bets. Our over-unders again, I took the Chiefs Bengals over, my brother took the Chiefs Bengals under. I ended up taking the Pats Jag or my brother took the Pats Jaguars under, and I took the Browns Steelers over. So that's all she wrote. We have not a lot of time before kickoff here as I break back into my broadcasting voice to wrap up a quick show. Not that quick at 40-something minutes. But anyway, everybody, all enjoy week 17 of the NFL season here. We will talk to you again later in the week. All the best uh, to your bets should you be throwing money on the line or your fantasy teams as it is championship Sunday for most, if not all, of the leagues. And otherwise, I don't know, enjoy the rest of your Sunday if you're some lame that doesn't watch football. Uh, I just said lame -o. Pretty fucking pathetic. I'm out. Peace.